Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. This is what you need to know before you take AP Chemistry. This is a great preparation for AP Chemistry. Before you walk in any door to an AP Chemistry class, this is what you need to know and be very good at, and your whole year is going to be a whole lot easier, and you're going to set up for success for that AP exam. It all centers around stoichiometry, which is one of the most important topics present in AP Chemistry. It's present within all the units throughout the course, and it's imperative that you're efficient and proficient, and it's a whole lot easier probably than when you did chemistry honors or pre-AP Chemistry. And it's something you want to be able to do coming into that classroom. So in all your calculations, you want to show your work explicitly, step by step. If you don't know what you're doing, simply just set up a proportion and work step by step. You always, in every calculation, want to show units and what substance those units are assigned to. And it's usually safe to round your answers to three significant digits. So let's get to the four calculations that you have to master. Four calculations. These are on your equation sheet. You don't have to memorize them, but they are four calculations that you want to be really, really, really good at. Primary, primarily in solids, if you see grams, divide by molar mass. Again, if you see grams, divide by molar mass to get into moles. So if you see a solid, you see grams, before you do anything, divide by molar mass to get into moles. If you have an aqueous solution and you see molarity, that big M, you want to multiply that by the number of liters and that gets us into moles. So any aqueous solution, you see molarity, you see liters, multiply them to get into moles. For gases, you're going to use Pivner. The pressure the times the volume equals moles of the gas times that R, which is 0.08206, times the temperature in Kelvin, and that's going to get you into moles. You can see in every calculation, whether it's solids, whether it's solutions, or whether it's gases, we're going to try to get it in the moles. So that in the fourth calculation, you want to be able to convert, which is simply just setting up a proportion, setting up a molar ratio. Moles of one substance is proportional to a moles of another substance. And you're going to see this in our four examples that we're going to give. This is an example of solids, primarily solids. You can see a student's given a task of determining the mass percentage of iodide, I minus, in a tablet that contains potassium iodide, Ki. You can see they have a whole bunch of stuff. They take some iodide, some Ki, and they mix it with some PbNO32, and they get a yellow precipitate of PbI2 solid, which is filtered washed and then dried and then dried which means we're going to take that last mass of the precipitate and the filter paper after drying so that it's all dried to completion okay so we have 1.698 grams of the filter paper and the pbi2 the precipitate and so if you have filter paper and the precipitate what do you want to take away is the filter paper so you can see the filter paper is 1.462 grams. So when we subtract that, we get 0.236 grams of PBI2. You can see I rounded the three significant digits. I put my units, grams, and what it's assigned to, PBI2. Now that we have 0.236 grams of PBI2, what do we do with grams? We always divide by the molar mass. We take the molar mass of PBI2, which is 461, if you look on your period table, 0.236 grams of PBI2 divided by 461 grams per mole, and we get 0 0.000512 moles of PBI2. You can see I'm putting units on what it's assigned to every single time. So 0 0.000512 moles of PBI2. Anytime you get the moles, do a molar ratio. So for every one mole of PBI2, there's two moles of I minus. You can see there's two I's in that PBI2. So we set up our proportion, 0 0.000512 moles of PBI2 is going to give me, look, just do cross multiplication, 0 0.00102 moles of I minus. And now that we have moles of iodide, I can multiply by molar mass, 0 0.00102 moles of iodide times 126.9 grams per mole, that's the molar mass of iodide, and that equals 0 0.130 grams of iodide. So now we know our grams of iodide. 
and we can find the mass percentage. All a percentage is, is part over whole. So we have 0 0.130 grams of iodide divided by the whole tablet of 0.425 grams times 100% gives me 30.6% of iodide in this tablet. And that is an example for solids. You can see we just went step by step by step to find the mass percentage. Now let's do an example for aqueous solutions. You can see we have a chemical reaction here, and you can see we have 25 milliliters of this solution, and we're going to titrate it with 0.017 molar of K2Cr2O7. Now, what do we do when we have molarity? We want to multiply by liters, but we got to find how many liters we've used. So you take the initial burette reading, the final burette reading. What are we going to do with those two numbers? We're going to subtract 45.52 milliliters minus 15.05 milliliters, and we get 30.47 milliliters. And what were we actually titrating is that K2Cr2O7, which is the same as that Cr2O7 negative 2. And so we know the volume 30.47 milliliters of that Cr2O7 negative 2, which is actually, when we divide by 1,000, is 0 0.03047 liters of Cr2O7 negative 2. So now let's take our molarity, 0 0.017 molar of Cr2O7 negative 2, times our liters, 0 0.03047 liters, and we get that equals 0 0.000518 moles of the Cr2O7 negative 2. You can see I just put my units and what it's assigned to and round the three significant digits. Now what do we do when we have moles? Go to a molar ratio. So look at your reaction. For every one mole of the Cr2O7 negative 2, we are using six moles of the Fe plus 2. And so for every one, we have six. So for every 0 0.000518 moles of the Cr2O7 negative 2, we're just going to do cross multiplication, multiply by 6. We get 0 0.00311 moles of Fe plus 2. Again, we're just going step by step. Now that we know the moles of the iron, the Fe plus 2, we can multiply by the molar mass of iron. We find that on the periodic table. So 0 0.00311 moles of Fe plus 2 times 55.85 grams per mole, and we get 0.173 grams of Fe plus 2. Now, we want to find a mass percent. How do we find any percent? It's part over whole. So we have 0.173 grams of the iron, and we're dividing by the total mass of the iron ore, which is 0.36 grams times 100%. And that gives us 48.1% of iron. There's 48.1% of iron in that iron ore sample. So that's an example of aqueous solution. So let's take a look at an example for gases. You can see here we're taking some hydrogen peroxide, some H2O2. We're adding some excess OCl minus or NaOCl, and we're getting a gas underwater. So this gas up here, this gas is not just the oxygen gas that's produced. We, because we're collecting it over water, this gas is actually oxygen gas and gaseous water. And so you can see, we know from the problem, 0.988 atmospheres, but this is the 0.988 atmospheres is the pressure of the oxygen gas and the gaseous water. And we know the vapor pressure of water is 23.8 millimeters of mercury. Now that 23.8 millimeters of mercury, we can do a quick conversion. We know for every one atmosphere, there's 760 millimeters of mercury. That's on your equation sheet. And so we know this is actually, in terms of millimeters of mercury, 0 0.0313 atmospheres of water. And so if the total pressure is 0.988 atmospheres, and we know the pressure of just the water is 0 0.0313 atmospheres of water, if we just subtract these, and that gives us 0.957 atmospheres of just the oxygen gas. Now that we know just the oxygen gas, we can use PIVNER, PV equals NRT. And we're going to use the pressure of oxygen gas, the volume of oxygen gas, the R, and the temperature of the oxygen gas. We know the 
pressure is 0.957 atmospheres of oxygen gas. We look here and we zoom in and we know this is, it's bigger, it's between 30 and 40, isn't it? So it's bigger than 31, bigger than 32, bigger than 33, bigger than 34, bigger than 35, bigger than 36. You can see it's a 36 and we're gonna estimate one number, 36.5 milliliters, 36.5 milliliters, which is 0 0.0365 liters. We know what the R is, it's 0 0.08206, and we know the temperature is 298 Kelvin, and we can do some quick math and find the number of moles of just the oxygen gas, because this is all just oxygen gas, and that's 0 0.00143 moles of oxygen gas. Now that you have moles, what are you always going to do? A molar ratio. So you can see we're always going to moles, and then we're doing a molar ratio. Look at my balanced reaction. For every one mole of oxygen gas, we are using one mole of H2O2. So for every 0.00143 moles of oxygen gas, we are using 0.00143 moles of hydrogen peroxide. Now we look, we note we have 0.800 molar of hydrogen peroxide times liters equals moles. So you can see I substitute that in. And that means I use 0.00178 liters of H2O2, which is 1.78 milliliters of H2O2. And that's an example for collecting gases underwater. Here's an example, just straight conversion. You can see we have these building materials, paraffin wax, and we're calculating the amount of thermal energy in kilojoules. We're required to melt 15.2 grams of paraffin. Ding, 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 ding. 15.2 grams. What do we do when we see grams? Divide by molar mass. We have 15.2 grams of paraffin. Divide by molar mass. They gave us the molar mass of paraffin, 282.62 grams per mole. And I end up getting 0 0.0538 moles of paraffin. So what do we do when we have moles? We're going to do a molar ratio. Well, we don't have a balanced reaction for this molar ratio. But we know, you can see it says the molar heat of fusion is 48.78 kilojoules per one mole. So set up a proportion. If you don't know what to do, set up a proportion and just go step by step. 48.78 kilojoules per one mole. We know there's 0 0.0538 moles. We do some cross multiplying. That means 2.62 kilojoules of heat to melt this wax. And that is a great preparation for AP Chemistry. If you want more information, go to mrayton.com, look at the access page, look at the AP Chemistry, and purchase some access, and this will help you all year in your AP Chemistry. This is Mr. Ayton signing off. Good luck this year in AP Chemistry.